I want you guys to understand something. This is not one man on a plane. These are movements that are happening in mainstream denominations today. Actual whole church councils are voting out that Jesus is the only way to God. I want you to be awake to this because the crown is coming off Vashti. And if the crown is coming off Vashti, God's looking for an Esther. Come on, God's looking for an Esther that'll understand it's not about you. How many understand this was not a fairy tale? This was every virgin in the land had to appear. And once she spent one night with the king, if he didn't like her, she didn't get to go back out and find herself a husband. She went into the house of concubines. Her life was over. How many understand there's a, there's a death that we've got to be willing to die to. We've got to be willing to say, God, I will not love my life even unto the death. Like I only got three hands on that one, okay? I'm telling you, it's serious business. But when the favor came on Esther, it wasn't for herself. It wasn't even for her family. It was because God wanted to save a nation. God's looking for an Esther church that's willing to save a nation. God's looking for an Esther church that's willing to say, if I perish, I perish. God's looking for an Esther church, an Esther people that will say, you know what? Who knows if I've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. How many just say, Lord, I'm here for such a time as this. I'm here, God, no matter what it's going to cost me. No matter what it's going to cost me. Come on, there's an awakening that's taking place today. People are waking up to understand that casual, comfortable Christianity is over. Let me say that again. Casual, comfortable Christianity. The days of just going to church and paying your tithes and maybe praying a little bit or teaching Sunday school. Those days are over. God is looking for an ecclesia. God is looking for a legislative body in this earth that are willing to rise up and say, if I perish, I perish perish, but I'm going to lift my voice against wickedness. I'm going to lift my voice up against death and destruction, and I'm going to stand in the gap for a generation because nations are hanging in the balance. How many are serious about this? Whew, I tell you, God is saying he's ramping it up and he's amping it up. How many have felt it? Amen. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. Amen. And so we know the story is that Esther then went before the king. She, you know, she got favor. She went before the king. He stretched out his scepter of favor. She said, come to a banquet. He came to a banquet. He brought Haman along. Uh -huh. Boo, hiss. <laughs> he brought Haman along. Without going into a big part of that story, chapter 7, Haman's evil plot kind of gets exposed. Oh. That's right. And... And the king actually orders Haman's death. Actually, we need to cheer about that. So, <laughs> the king orders Haman's death. And so, let me say this Haman was dead, but his decree was not. There was still a decree of death and destruction in the land. And so we know Esther went before the king again. And he stretched out his scepter of favor to her. And he said, Esther, what is it that you want? You found favor in my sight. Let me say this. How many have been believing God for favor? This is a day that God is saying, I'm going to extend favor to my people. But he said, my people need to learn to spend their favor. How many know you can have favor and never spend it? God is saying, I'm going to start setting some of you up in positions of influence, position of favor, position to have a voice. And the Lord says, when you get there, you need to be able to spend the favor that I've given to you. God said to, to Esther, what is it that you want? This was her opportunity to actually spend her favor. You can have money and not spend it. How many of you have found that? Like none of you raised your hand, okay? How many know that you can actually have money and not spend it? Hopefully some of you have figured that out, okay? But how many know it does you no good unless you spend it? You can have favor and it does you no good unless you're willing to spend it. God is saying, I'm extending favor for more than just your personal blessing. For more than just personal doors of influence. God's saying, I'm giving you favor so you can spend favor for the kingdom's sake. 
Lift up your hands. Father, I just thank you, God, that there is a mantle of favor that is falling upon the people, especially in this Watchman State and especially in this region, God, because there are some things that need to flip. There are some decrees that need to be overturned. There are some people in office that need to be taken out of office. There are some situations, God, that need to experience divine reversal. And we decree, God, a favor for divine reversals in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. So Esther goes before the king. And in Esther chapter 8, verse 8, it says that the king stretched out his scepter to her and he said this to her. She told him all the things. There's this horrible decree of death and destruction. Let me tell you what the decree said. It said, on such and such a day, wherever you find a Jewish person or one of God's people, you can kill them and take their property. Does that sound like the devil? <laughs> Does that sound like what the devil's been doing to believers? Come on. If you speak up, you'll lose your job. If you stand for a conservative value, you'll lose your job. If you, listen, we're in a voice war. My now 89-year-old father got thrown in Facebook jail. He called me. He's like, Jane, I'm in Facebook jail. How do I get out? I'm like, Daddy, I don't know. You're on your own, okay? <laughs> I don't know, okay? Because he said something that wasn't politically correct, that wasn't culturally woke enough. How many know that woke is just a counterfeit of awakening? Yes. That's right. That's right. And so Esther goes before the king, and this is what the king says to her. He didn't say, okay, Esther, I'm going to fix your problem for you. That's what the church has been looking for. God, fix our problems. Right. The Lord doesn't say, okay, church, I'll fix your problems for you. No, 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 this is what he says. He says, you yourself write a new decree. Write it in the king's name. Seal it with the king's signet ring. Because whatever you write in the king's name and whatever you seal with the king's signet ring cannot be reversed. That's right. And God was saying, I am giving you the authority to write a new decree. Now, on a personal level, you can go home and do this tonight. You can write a new decree over your family. You can write a new decree over your finances. You can write a new decree over your health. You can write a new decree over whatever it is the enemy's been robbing from you. But I'll tell you what the decree of the Lord sounds like. It sounds opposite of what the devil has decreed. See, the devil's decreeing America is no longer a Christian nation. But do you realize that our own, um, our own Supreme Court ruled by several different court cases that based on our founding documents, based on the language that's used in almost every state founding documents, based on the, the abundance of references to the creator and to God's ways and to scriptures that have been integrated into the very foundational doctrines of our na nation, they said, by this evidence, we decree that this is a Christian nation. Not a recent Supreme Court, but, a, but one that, that was about 100 years ago. But I'm telling you that those decrees are still on the books. <laughs> so the king said to her, you yourself write a new decree. Because whatever you write in the king's name cannot be re re reversed. How many have decreed, America shall be saved? Do you know that's a decree? That's a decree that flies in the face of what the enemy's decreeing. And if we can just get every believer to say, America shall be saved, God send, God send revival. God send revival. I'm telling you, we'll see this nation turn around. Because God never saved by many. He always saved by few.